Hey everybody, welcome back to the feature crew. Last week was uh, Opus 4.5 week from Anthropic. We tried to test it last week because we were very excited. Anthropic was touting its 3D performance. We encountered some issues last week and then had to run off for Thanksgiving. That's why the video is a little bit delayed, uh, but we've got it up and running. We've done some tests in private and found that we are uh, also seeing that high quality performance in 3D domains. So we are doing a special episode today where we're gonna run all of our 3D tests, D Simulation, Planet Gen, and uh, Dungeon Crawler. And we're going to see, we're going to put that claim to the test. Is this really the best 3D model on the planet? Let's dive in. All right. So we're all set up for our first test. It's a channel favorite, uh, our planet test. Models are getting quite good at generating planets. And so we're looking for the advanced features like the atmosphere and um, the biomes. And then eventually we'll push it to get into first person. So we'll send this off now. We are in client with Opus 4.5 and extended thinking selected. We'll close out the video maybe by going through some vibe bench results so you can see what it's like calling the API directly. But for now, we want to see what the real world experience will be for folks using the client. We got a response oh. back. It's looking good. We'll, we'll load it up full screen. We've got a good little loading animation, and then Ooh. we are dropped into a planet, which is already looking like, if not Pretty the good. best, one of the best that we've seen so far, especially yeah. given that it's a first result. The atmosphere is coherent. One thing I'm super happy about is that the atmosphere, the clouds, the terrain, and the water are all their own yeah. distinct thing, yeah, yeah, which yeah. we've usually had to, even good models, we've had to push for in the past. And the controls um, are here? Do they work? The controls are here. We can up the rotation, rotation. speed. Whoa. It have. All right. And we can up the cloud speed, and we can see that they are animated and sort of like yep. naturally noise animated. We can change the time of day, which actually does move yep. the sun. Look Ooh. at that. And intensity. we have the Works. atmosphere intensity. This, and this was one shot. I mean, yeah. Yeah. and tides, right? The, I mean, the, the I mean, biomes look great. Like they look Minecrafty, which is, I mean, <laughs> in the prompt, yes. Yeah. Sun. Oh, I mean, wow. the fact that the the stars themselves also look pretty good like the far away ones obviously and coherent, the ui is like yeah like you're coherent you know like it's not like anything amazing it's literally the same thing we've seen before but just adding that little bit of extra pizzazz without us having to say oh make this sci-fi or whatever like it's taken its own creative liberty which i think is good like a lot of users aren't really good at prompting so to yeah have and model, and to add on that, like we've seen over the, the last couple rounds of models, it does seem like they're training in specific UI that, that matches. I've noticed in my use of Gemini and ChatGPT that they both have their own default UI language mm -hmm. here. And so you'll see a very similar UI across different prompts and different domains. Whereas in this case, it clearly picked up, as Dylan was saying, the, the planety, spacey sci-fi nature and went for a coherent UI pattern. No, this is awesome. I, I think clearly the best result we've gotten from a model in one shot. Yeah, there's no like specific feedback that I want to give it to like fix it. And so I think I think we can just jump right into challenge mode, which which should tell us what we need to know about this model, which is that it's doing great so far. I would say the only nitpick, and we see this across all models, is like clearly there's still a little bit of misunderstanding of scale in a sense. And especially as we go to first person mode, uh, challenge mode, it'll be interesting to see how it does. How big a tree's gonna be, how big a rock's mm -hmm. gonna be. Certainly for first shot, this is like everything we kind of look at. And with the addition of like adding a little bit more style and pizzazz, this is like mm -hmm. getting to the point where you might even just immediately share it, right? Like if I was right. a first year college student and we did like a project like this, that would have been like pretty impressive. Everyone would have been like, wow, that's really good. And now there's just a single shot prompt uh, in Opus, so pretty impressive. So we've got our feedback sent off to Opus as we for like a first person sort of game with a, with a gameplay loop and props on the planet. This is our normal challenge mode. And we've added an extra note about making sure that the scale of everything, the relative scale between the player, the props, the planet, all sort of makes sense and look right. I didn't want to ask for a like full realistic scale because then you're talking about uh, a massive planet. And you're starting to get into like, you know, precision issues in 3JS. And so... Uh, we can focus on on like a game planet that looks right. This looks problematic. Uh, uh, all right. Well, we have a response back. Let's copy it. Okay. Mm. It, I mean, I do like it. It added like an in like a hot bar with like emojis. Yeah. No errors. All right. All right give it once more. I'll give it a screenshot. We'll try it in full screen. All right. Yeah, we'll give it a try full screen. Hey okay. Now. Here we are. There are some issues with the atmosphere potentially now let me walk over to the day side this isn't the day side so i oh there's a rock i'm not sure if that's the planet moving below me or if i'm always moving oh i think the planet's moving no i think you're right that's clever well no kind of is it's like it preserved the functionality from the first prompt i get why i did that no no, no, no. the planet moving is good but the fact that i'm not parented to it is a problem oh yeah 
But uh, I think okay, uh, yeah. so there, there's some up to Dylan's point scale looking way better. Yep. And I think, you know, we're seeing some common errors here. Like, look, when I look too far to the left, I shoot up to the top. Like, models have always struggled implementing player controllers. But to give the model credit here, like, the trees are a little too big, but reasonable scale. You know, best we've seen in, in terms of first person. I'm going to go see if I can collect some resources. They're correctly oriented? That's yes. another thing we see a lot with the models. It's hard, because I can't walk forward. I can only walk backwards, so I'm going to back up to the... <laughs> Apologies for any viewers getting nausea. Uh, oh, shoot. I saw a tooltip. All right, I got to go find another one. There it is. There it is. I just want to verify that I can collect something. Oh, there's a rock in front of you. Oh, no. no. This is going to drive me insane. Can I? Okay, crab oh, yep. walk there's over. There's a tooltip. No, no, tool no, no, tip. no. When you looked at the tree, it said a tooltip. Yep. Ethan yes. You got wood. Yes. I got wood. Nice. <laughs> Chat, clip that. Oh, crafting. Wow. That's oh. not bad. Like, again, I like the UI treatments cho chosen here. Um, what's the other thing? Is that like ore or something? Like, is that just wood? Yeah, uh, I think I need... Oh, that was wood and then I crafted sticks. Okay, okay. And I need stone. Okay, anyways, this is a quite quite an impressive pass here. We'll open source this. We'll let people go around, do future challenge modes. Uh, so, so definitely let us know what you're seeing with this kind of prompt. Uh, and now we'll move on to our second test, which is city simulation. So we'll get that set up. Overall, very impressive. I mean, does fulfill the expectation of best 3D model so far. Completely agree. All right, so we're set up for our city simulation test. Um, again, familiar to regular viewers of the channel, we are asking for a bunch of sliders to control the simulation and not just a city, but like simulation elements. So we want NPCs uh, and we want them like going about a daily routine, uh, cars driving around, that kind of thing. So we'll send it off again. Extended thinking, Opus 4.5, and we'll see what it's able to do. I got to say, Opus 4.5 a lot faster than previous Opus models. Whoa. The loading screens are nice. Okay, yeah, we. I mean, it's good at loading screens, but okay, those are the windows, and boy, are they good. Okay, I see people. Dude, there's a there's mini a map. Mini map. Some of the. Do we want to put this in full screen and then have a look? Yeah, we can take a quick look. I mean, we're definitely gonna need to run some <laughs> feedback. Yeah. The okay. loading screen is <laughs> really nice. And see, you can see the little cars going around. The UI is, again, yeah. nice. Still seems kind of sci-fi. It does seem yeah. sci-fi. You know, I, so, I may have spoken too soon. This might just yeah. be the standard style for Claude, frankly. Yeah. Yep. Which is actually weird now looking at it, because now I'm like, yeah. it looks a little bit like a uh, movie, movie sci-fi UI for yeah, the spaceship, yeah, yeah, you know? I think the left-hand side UI, minus the fact that everything's like blowing up right now, has been clustered correctly, right? Like in the sense that like, it's slightly nicer than what we've seen before. So maybe again from the whole, even if this design language is like the same, it still seems to be a little bit of a step up in like how it kind of formats everything. You know, there's a bit of an issue with the sliders and stuff like that, but yeah. it's quite nice. This and feels we're, like we're it's getting to a to spot like a game. where it's worth critiquing the UI, right? So that, that's it's yeah, worth, yeah, yeah. we're sitting there being like, hey, we weren't even getting UI worthy of critiquing, and now I'm sitting there going, yeah, the stupid little bars by all the titles look weird. It looks like it's indented when it shouldn't be. It looks like those should have been carrots or something to collapse a section. But yeah, it's coherent, right? That, that's huge. And they work. How many times have we have unworking UI? <laughs> That's probably true. Less common okay. these days, but yes. Okay, um, I'm going to give it a screenshot. We're going to try to get it to fix up what it did. There is an error in console, so we'll send that. All right, feedback is off. We'll see if it's able to fix these errors. I'll tell you, my dad's a super fan of our channel now. He turned on the subscribe button, the notification bell. Yeah, hit that notification bell like Chris's dad while we're at it, while we're waiting. <laughs> Shout out to my dad. Yeah, be like that. Turn on the notifications. It really does help the channel. We're still still a small YouTube channel growing, so every single subscriber matters. Thank you all for who've stayed with us for over a year now. So, incredible. Yeah, yeah. There's an interesting moment here of it's compacting our conversation. So you mm -hmm. a little load bar here. Anthropic's been really good about pulling in Claude Code features into the chat client. Yeah. So, the conversation compacting has been around for a year in Claude Code, and now we're seeing it automatically happen in, in client. Whereas we've seen in the past, uh, when they first added the sort of agentic loop into the client, that sometimes it would just reach the limit of the conversation and break. Spoke too soon on the Claude client here. Looks <sighs> like you got hung up there, Claude. Do I tell it? Yeah, I think so. Stop running. Failed to create city generator. Remove old file, and then fail to load file content. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Opus strikes again. All right, I'm hoping this gets through quickly. Woo! And we officially have the best city we've seen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not perfect, but the way it did the texturing and everything is quite impressive. Cars are still all over the place. That's pretty normal. Yep, yep, yep. Going through buildings. Oh, look at that. You can make it look like a coding agent view. Okay. 
Yeah, so let's take it. Let's let's walk through these sliders a little bit and see what it can do. City speed. Yep, everything moves faster. The cars are still um, <laughs> turned the wrong way. Yeah, you know some some classic mistakes. But again, just visually, like wow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, even you know, I like how it did, took into account like real building structure with these textures, where it's got like dividing lines between you know significant floor levels. We still Not got buildings like colliding the buildings. with each other as oh, seen before. There's a lot of that. A lot of collisions. A lot of collisions. But I did like you know, it's got like a couple distinct building types. It's got like the downtown is clearly. Can you crank uh, the city size? Taller buildings. Yeah, let's let's crank the city city size. That's speed. And then oh, that's speed. Massive generate. Let's go massive. Hard crash. <laughs> okay, massive okay. gets slightly bigger. We can turn down the density, which which fixes some of our collision problems. I do want to note there are windows on the roofs, which is kind of funny. Okay, so this is less blow you away than the planet gen, right? This is more in line, better looking city. The models are better. The logic of the city simulation is still a little odd. I still think logic wise, we had uh, what was it? Was it GPT five Pro that went like full architectural tool? didn't look good but it, it yeah, yeah, yeah sort of like geo map with these lines and shaded areas uh, gpt5 pro like on the spirit of the prompt for the city which is actually looking for like a simulation i think it did a bit better this is by far the best looking city we've yeah, had absolutely. um and i think it's it's similar on the on the planet uh, you know it's like a it's a step up in the visuals we're, we're not diving deep enough in the implementation to comment on that but like overall it's not some like quantum leap but it is certainly the step, the noticeable step up that I wanted to see from Gemini and didn't in this domain. Right. And then they probably, and Anthropic claimed that, and I, I think it's safe to say they, they were they delivered. This is, this is a step up. Cool weather effects. So. Yep, the weather effects all work. And, and this is just like, th this prompt is denser in terms of functionality than the planet prompt. And so we often see models leave stuff out or half implement features. And the consistency of how it really, you know, like I can turn off the traffic, that works. I can turn off the pedestrians, that works. Turn off the parks for some reason. The feature set here is awesome. You know, we, we'll, we'll open source this as well. And, and hopefully y'all can push it for a challenge mode and see what you're able to accomplish. All right. So we, we uh, lost both Chris and Dylan. We're running out of time here, but we're already late on this video. We want to get it out to y'all as quickly as we can. So um, we'll, we'll open source the planet. We'll open source the city. And now I'll, I'll finish us off with our final dungeon crawler test. All right. We're loaded up with dungeon crawler. Again, a familiar prompt on the channel. We are asking for like a full gameplay loop and that the dungeon needs to be procedurally generated with multiple rooms, different enemy types, loot, etc. Uh, this is the one where we're really focusing in on uh, like how does it understand interaction. We got a little bit of that with the planet test and the challenge mode there, uh, but we'll, we'll focus in really here and see how well it can generate something that's actually useful, playable, enjoyable in this sort of game setting. All right, so we got a response, another impressive loading screen, and I'm noticing that it actually did change the sort of visual style here to match more what we're looking for. We saw the sci-fi visual style for the game, and then we saw it kind of repeat that for the city. So good to see a more dungeon crawler native style here. And we'll enter the de depths. So we're in the dungeon. Let's see if we can pick up this coin. Fortunately, we cannot pick up the coin. We do see a mini map that is loading as we move around. Okay, I can attack, but I need to be very close. And then they drop a coin that I unfortunately cannot pick up. Torch. So this is super reasonable. I think it's I think it's the most reasonable layout we've seen in one of these tests. Actually feels like a bit of a dungeon. I can see that there are like distinct rooms and hallways. And then additionally, the room size varies. Now, the layout of enemies probably could be a bit better. The controls could be a bit better. I don't think this is the best version of this we've seen across the board. Uh, Gemini 2.5 had a really good texturing approach that it did. But I'm impressed so far. So I'll give it one round of feedback and see, um, you know, how far we can push it. I want to note that we I did just complete the level and we're able to generate generate a new floor. And it shows that, you know, I have I have level two and all that sort of stuff. So let, let me go. Let me go back in, ask for a, a round of like visual and functionality improvements. And then we can see how far Claude is able to go. So we sent off the feedback. We're asking for a sort of full gameplay loop, an improvement to the texturing. Um, and more variety in the enemies and loot. Uh, I did notice while I was over there that it said I could pick up with E. So just confirming that I can't do that with the coin. So I did also ask for the ability to pick things up. So it's off and we are going to see what it does. As I'm seeing some of the code stream in, I'm seeing emojis for like different pickups and tools. So hopefully we get some good options here. It's been inferencing for quite a while. There's no timer on this, but it's been going for a while now. This is getting real long. I'm like worried about it 
falling apart here. It hit its max length. I thought I saw it restart writing the file somewhere in there, and then now, yeah, now it's starting from the beginning when I hit continue. So we'll, we'll let it run through this one. Uh, if it doesn't pull it together, then you know I'll just open source the the code. But I'm hoping I'm hoping it'll it'll pull it together and get something runnable. Alrighty, we have a response back. I was I was a little too pessimistic. It was able to pull through after near 20 minutes of inference here across those two turns. So probably around 10 minutes for this last attempt. It says it has 10 enemy types, including multiple bosses that appear every third floor, a 25 plus item loot system, a rarity system, full inventory, procedural textures, additional features, XP and leveling. All right, it's claiming a lot. So uh, let's load it up and see if it was able to put that all together. All right, well, good good sign that it loaded and that the new controls are there. So we'll get it loaded full screen. Wow. All right, let's get started. Wow, look at the textures. All right, so it, it is lagging a bit, you know. The, the heavy request was a lot, but these are by far the best textures we've ever seen beating Gemini, which was the previously best approach at the procedural texturing. The enemies are still a little silly. Okay, it says I have a health potion, but I'm not seeing that. In oh, I am. One on my inventory is health potion. Let me try to use it. Looks like Q is to use. I'm able to pick up the coins. It says I have the war hammer, but again, not seeing that in my inventory. Yeah, I'm having trouble attacking these enemies. Okay, but I am, like, it, it is saying all this different loot. Okay, yeah, I can definitely use the health potions with Q. Picking up the gold, picking up the mana. Now I'm just going to try to speed run through the dungeon here. There are different gold values that can be dropped and picked up. The certain coins are worth 5, 10, 20, etc. Looks like the forward directions through here. Minimap is very helpful and still working. I'm wondering if that purple is the end of the level. Okay, floor complete, and I'm onto a new floor. Picked up a shadow blade. Now again, I'm not really sure where these, where this loot is going. Oh, okay, so I do have an inventory, and I can see the hammer that I picked up before is here. War hammer, oh, it's got these great little tool tips. Oh, and I can equip different okay so unfortunately i lose it doesn't recapture pointer lock once i go into the inventory but this is a super impressive result so we'll definitely open source this i'm hoping y'all can play it maybe fix some of these bugs and let us know what you're seeing by far very clear from these tests today that this is the best 3d model on the planet available beating gemini 3 gpt 5.1 and sort of the other top models from other providers um I'm seeing the same results on Bi Vibebench. We ran out of time to go check it out, but but take a look. Vibebench.ai. We have a bunch of um, we have a bunch of Claude 4.5 Opus results up there, and you can vote against other models. Just from my cursory glance, when I generated them, they look to be a step above any of the other models, including Gemini 3. And like I said before, this is not some like quantum leap, but it is a very noticeable step change in 3D performance. This is what I was hoping to see from Gemini 3, and did not, unfortunately. Although I know people are seeing. Gemini 3 be very ca capable in other areas. We also didn't test uh, Claude 4.5 Opus here in different domains other than just 3D generation. So would love to hear in the comments what people are seeing in other domains. Are you using this for general coding? Are you using this for uh, things outside of coding? Definitely let us know. Yeah, but I'm very excited to keep playing around with this and seeing how I can, how far I can push it on the various tests that we did today. I want to, uh, like I said before, I really want to see if we can get a whole solar system in that planet test, which I've been able to do with other models, but through many, many turns. So uh, we'll see if uh, 4.5 Opus cuts down on that back and forth a bit. Yeah, so super happy with the performance here. I'm sure I'm going to be integrating it into some of my 3D experiments and maybe even some of my workloads. So really cool. Time for the other folks to respond. Again, Gem and I was touting this incredible game, Gen, but this just blows it out of the water in my opinion. So, um, yeah, are you, uh, definitely leave feedback. As Chris said earlier, so, yep, links to Artifacts and Vibebench will be in the description. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like. We have more content coming up, so if you want to stay following the channel, give us a subscribe, hit the notification bell. It really helps the channel grow. And uh, thanks for watching, everybody.